How can we as teachers create an inclusive classroom environment that engages all of our students in the learning process, and not just those who are already engaged and participating? When classrooms are not intentionally designed to be inclusive, then a few student voices tend to dominate. How can we avoid this and accommodate and engage each student's unique learning needs? Let's start by considering what an inclusive classroom looks like. An inclusive classroom is one in which all students feel intellectually supported and are invited to develop a sense of belonging regardless of identity, learning preferences, or background. To achieve this, we need to develop a number of key characteristics. For example, in an inclusive classroom, all students have opportunities to actively participate. All students can make a personal connection to the course material. All students have the time to think. All students can pose ideas and construct their knowledge of the course content and all students are explicitly welcomed into the intellectual discussion of the course content. Let's unpack each of these characteristics. Providing all students with the opportunity to actively participate is important because learning is not just an act of passively receiving knowledge. It is an act of constructing meaning and involves a student's active engagement and participation. To do this, we need to address the anxieties that can prevent students from engaging. For instance, many students find it intimidating to answer or pose questions while they are still trying to understand the material. This can make them hesitant to speak up in class. Additionally, many students, particularly those from historically underrepresented or marginalized backgrounds, may feel anxious about being judged. This can also put them in a vulnerable position if they need to answer questions while still trying to learn the material. We can help to dispel these concerns by explicitly inviting our students to contribute their thoughts, questions, and ideas, no matter where they are on their journey of understanding. To do so, we must intentionally establish the classroom tone such that students feel that their questions and ideas will always be engaged with respectfully and thoughtfully. One simple way to do this is to take a moment to appreciate and validate every question they ask. Now, verbal participation is often the most common way students are asked to engage during class. However, is it always the best option for every topic or for every student? Consider how some students may be better at expressing their understanding by drawing illustrations or making diagrams like concept maps. Other students may prefer expressing their understanding in writing rather than speaking about it in front of the class. This highlights the importance of offering students other ways to express their knowledge, thoughts, and questions. For example, you may end every class with a few minutes of writing time in which students write down one important thing they learned that day and one thing they have a question about. Another option is to provide students with a thought-provoking question and to ask them to write their responses in a class discussion forum asynchronously. Offering our students multiple ways to participate in class is not only equitable and inclusive, but it also helps them to develop a wider range of communication skills. Let's move on to another characteristic of an inclusive classroom, providing all students with the opportunity to make a connection to the course material. Students will feel more motivated to understand the material if they can personally connect to it and see how it applies to something they care about. It is important to note that students have different interests, values, and backgrounds, so incorporating culturally diverse role models and values into your course helps more students to see themselves in the discipline. Now, it may not be possible to represent every student's cultural background, but making a wide range of culturally diverse connections to the course material demonstrates to your students that diverse perspectives are valued in your classroom. We should also try to apply the course content to a diverse array of real-world examples to help every student see how the course material relates to their own experiences and interests. For example, if you describe a concept in chemistry, consider also relating it to biology, medicine, food, art, charity or social work, history, etc. Different students will find different applications of the course material meaningful and relevant. Another key aspect of fostering an inclusive classroom is ensuring that all students have the time to think through in-class questions. For example, consider a scenario in which an instructor asks the question and calls on the first or second student who raises their hand. If the student answers correctly, the teacher may just move on with the lesson. In this example, 
While one or two students had enough time to think through the question, it is not clear whether the rest of the class had the time to fully process it. To help in this situation, we can turn to active learning techniques such as a one-minute essay or a think-pair-share. These activities effectively provide a minute or two for all the students to think about the question and participate in the learning process before asking anyone to answer. Another strategy is to tell the students that you won't call on anyone until you see a certain number of hands raised. Techniques like these provide enough time for all the students to think through a question, which increases the number of students who are willing to participate in class discussions. Active learning also helps to provide all students with the opportunity to construct their knowledge of the course content, which is another characteristic of an inclusive classroom. When using active learning, teachers take on the role of facilitators presenting the students with challenging problems and coaching them to apply the skills and concepts taught in the class to solve them. To achieve this, you can use active learning techniques like anonymous polling, group problem solving, concept mapping, statement corrections, and sequence reconstructions. These techniques enable each student to apply what they've learned to solve a problem and to construct their understanding of the material as they do so. Using a variety of different techniques can help to reach more students because certain techniques may work better for some students than others. This approach also has the benefit of helping students to explore a concept from different perspectives, which means they can make deeper connections between ideas. Finally, in an inclusive classroom, all students are explicitly welcomed into the intellectual discussion of the course content. This characteristic makes use of many of the others we've spoken about, providing all students the time to think, giving students opportunities to develop their own understanding of the material together through active learning exercises, and creating a culture that ensures that students feel comfortable contributing and asking questions. Together, these characteristics all contribute to a classroom where students know their voices and ideas are respected and valued. An inclusive classroom fosters mutually respectful relationships between students while engaging everyone in the learning process.